The expectation, and Elon has already said it, and I believe it can be done, is that it will start to be doing useful work in the factories next year, meaning 2024. Oh, that would be so we'll probably start seeing that, and then the videos that will start showing it doing real work on the production floor, and not just like a test to show that no, it's doing yeah. it, but literally doing shifts will probably wake up a lot of people that, wow, it's absolutely here. So what do you think for the next year maybe, and for the coming years? Um, what do you see the next big thing that you would focus on? There have been some surprises. So the, the Cybertruck event in some ways was very low key. It turned yeah. out the after party was like the big event. That's where it was more fun uh -huh. than actually, you know, obviously being able to get the tour would have been great, but they didn't have like a big party actually at Giga Texas. It's more or less an opportunity to sort of see the Cybertruck yeah. and see the delivery event. And we were thinking that, oh, they're going to do some grand thing like they've done before. <laughs> yeah. And maybe the Tesla bot will come out and escort it or yeah. they do something like that. But it turned out it didn't. And of course, the reason it didn't is because a week later is when they we see the Gen 2. And so that absolutely makes sense. So it means there's a lot of surprises coming on. That in, in 2024, the first thing is AI Day 2. Or oh, yeah. three, sorry, AI yeah, Day yeah, 3. Yeah. We yeah. haven't had it. We were supposed to have it this year. We oh, didn't. my God. It's going to happen in January or February. The reason it's waiting till then is there's three things that have to happen. It's AI Day. It, it's yeah. not Optimus mm -hmm. Day. So that means they want to have Dojo up and running. They want to be able to talk about that. They That's want to have true. FSD 12 out. And they want to have like the new Gen Optimus. Those are the so they'll have things. all those things. And then it'll be interesting to see what they do when they display the new Gen Optimus, Gen 2 Optimus 2 a crowd. Mm -hmm. Are they just going to show it on stage or is it going to be more interactive? So we want to see that. The expectation, and Elon has already said it, and I believe it can be done, is that it will start to be doing useful work in the factories next year, meaning 2024. Oh, that would be so we'll probably start seeing that. And then the videos that will start showing it doing real work on the production floor. And not just like a test to show that no, it's doing yeah. it, but literally doing shifts will probably wake up a lot of people that, wow, it's absolutely here. Of course, the breakthroughs that we're going to see with FSD 12 mm -hmm. uh, could be rather interesting yeah. um, to see how sort of human-like the driving is. Yeah. I've had a good feeling of, of what FSD can do mm -hmm. here and there. And every now and then, it does a pretty good job, and, and it seems almost human-like, but in some cases, it doesn't. You know, it mm -hmm. feels more yeah, like yeah. truly a student driver that's just trying to learn how to drive. It'll be interesting to see how refined it is and whether it FSC really knows 12, how to yeah. do stuff. Um, and of course, that's going to come along with the dojo. So we're going to see that. And then there's the ramp ups that are going to be going on. So how quickly does Cybertruck ramp up? Because when that happens, it really hits the bottom line big. Um, and now we know like the Model 3 refresh is kind of done. So those numbers are going to start coming out yeah. really quickly. So that means next year, you're going to see the numbers of deliveries are going to be really impressive. This year, they were a little bit tamped down because mm -hmm. of a lot of the retooling yeah, and some of, of the refreshing that was going on. But you're starting to see the groundwork that's going on. You'll see a little bit in 2024 if you're starting to come through. And then 2025, <laughs> it'll probably be. become incredible. Because when you lay a foundation, a lot of good things can start to happen after that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you've mentioned here a point that's very important also to differentiate the Tesla bot uh, from the Boston Dynamics robot. Kind of hand-worked thing in, in, in a very low it's quantity. Very, it's very heuristic, right? Yeah, it's, it's almost yeah. like still in a kind of a prototype phase, not in a mass production phase, not with mass production in mind right now. I, I think, of course, they want to mass produce this thing, I, I can assume, but it's very expensive. It has LIDARs or LIDAR yeah. it has still. Mm -hmm. It has to be programmed, still hard coded more or less with the planned pass. That's why the all, all the beautiful choreographies were actually taped many hours to, to get everything together and then uh, even sometimes it falls over and they have to re reshoot stuff again. Of course, the Tesla bot also had those program pass, I would assume. For early the, for, on, for, early for, on, uh, right. Yeah, and also maybe for the, the video we saw, the, the handshake and the hand movement is like a test phase maybe from the bot. But uh, I think they already shown some things that he did they, by they've himself. They've shown a lot of end-to-end and, and end stuff. They, exactly. They've shown that. And so, that's the difference. That's yes, the main difference, that, I would say. That is one of the main differences and definitely going yeah. forward if you're able to train it mm -hmm. by showing it, by either showing it yeah. videos or showing it live, what it is yeah. you want to do, and if it's able to then sort of pick it up. Now, a lot of the movements that we saw in, in the, the robot seem like it's learning from humans or it's sort of figuring out how to do it. So that's why there was this very, very natural movement. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I pointed out yeah. to John yesterday is that when the robot decided to turn its head, 
It didn't just do this with its head. It turned its shoulders, yeah, too. Yeah, it leans, yeah. It which leans is it. really kind of odd to me because for a mechanism, yeah. it should be able to turn its head around and around and around without any yeah, problem. Like this, we yeah. do that because when you do it, it kind of hurts your yeah, muscle a little bit. And it's a little bit easier to take the stress off yeah. just by moving yeah. your shoulder a little yeah. bit. But for a robot, it should just be, eh, eh. it should be more robotic. But it was, oh, looking around up like that. Oh, look at my hands, that kind of thing. So that kind of fluidity comes from a neural net understanding its entire body and how it works. And it doesn't come from something that you heuristically program. And it's picking up a lot of cues. It's learning a lot of things. We were thinking like in the squatting with the fingers going <laughs> yeah. out. Did it figure that self out itself? Or... Was it actually watching a coach? Because evidently, mm -hmm. someone, people who are these coaches on it, yeah. when you do a squat and you come down like that, they say, put your fingers out for some reason, yeah. as opposed to clenching yeah, your fist. True. That's true. And so it's like, okay, was it observing and saying, oh, I'm <laughs> yeah. going to do that too? And if that's the Super case, then it means it really is learning by watching other people. That's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's the big thing. And you've mentioned also um, different points. AI day is, of course, the big thing. And I have to say something there. XAI with their large language model with, with Grok, Grok. Uh, already in place. You kind of see a pattern here that when Tesla develops something um, and Elon is pushing something, it's fastly implemented into the workflow fl flow to get out the nooks and crannies because if they would wait with FSD and with the rollout of FSD, like he mentioned, in one year, in two years, then we wouldn't have FSD right now. Right. Because it takes time to iterate in the process. That's the same reason, in my opinion, that they use the Model Y with 4680 batteries, actually. Why did they do that? Did, do they have to do that? No, they were testing the battery on the in the field. Yes. What is happening there? Then they gathered data. That data came back to the Cybertruck again. And this is something that's so unprecedented, in my opinion, that they don't wait. And of course, sometimes it's bad for the customer. Some people pay it up front and something like this. It's kind of deceptive at some times. I also think it's he's too fast with, with that, but um, also with monetizing sometimes because the product is not actually too much rounded, but it's enough. I, I would say it has enough value It's not full self-driving autopilot that people expect it, but it's it's, but it's, it's good enough. It's extremely useful. It's Ex extremely yeah. useful. I mean, I've I've used it, and it just takes all the pressure off on these long drives. Yeah, Even exactly. though it cannot drive all the way point yeah. to point, it's doing like 95% of the driving yeah. for me. That's true. And I'm far more relaxed. And not only yeah. that, it's such a good co-pilot, because it yeah. really is a co-pilot, that I can start observing other things Yeah and not have this tunnel vision when yeah, I'm yeah, driving. Yeah. So I'm actually more aware of what's going mm -hmm. on and I'm less stressed. Yeah. So a lot of people might say, eh, it's not Robotaxi yet. It's like, okay, <laughs> it may not be, but boy, it makes those long drives much easier. Yeah, and I've absolutely. done a couple of very long drives and have discovered that. And everyone else I talk to, they say they feel the same way. They arrive fresh. You've said that uh, ramping the, the Cybertruck is a big thing. And I also think that's that's very important to have the Cybertruck, so because still many people don't believe that this is going to be pumped out. Of course, the delivery event should be maybe with more Cybertrucks, I don't know, but they ramp up production significantly more and more. Now you have the Founder Series that you yes. can order and stuff like this. So there there will be some, some rollouts and, still. And it's going out to yeah. a lot of people that, that I know, which kind of surprises me that they <laughs> already are, are getting a Cybertruck. That's crazy. And it appears, and really what Joe Tegmeyer has been showing is that there's a, the production ramp is going quite well. There's a lot of Cybertrucks showing up crazy. in the parking lot and going in the back of, of delivery <laughs> vehicles. Crazy. So, yeah. Exciting. And uh, going back to the to the AI day, um, what are what, what synergies do you also see? Okay. Will we see a Tesla bot talking to you? I, because I eventually, it eventually you will. Eventually you will. So, I, and that will, it's question is whether that's going to be like a large language model or a large language model that is multimodal that rather than them doing um, speech to text mm -hmm. and then putting that into a large language model, whether you speak to it and it understands you immediately because oh, it doesn't convert wow. it to text. And wow. that's what the next level of AIs are going to be is to kind of avoid that intermediary step because of listening to you. Because it has a slight you. delay and everything. Yeah, sli sli slight delay. And when that happens, it, it's going to not only be in the Tesla bot, it's going to be in Tesla's itself. Because we know right now when you use the, the voice activation, 
it takes a while yeah, before it figures out what you said. But if you can have an inference chip already in there that's understanding wow. what you're saying immediately and not have to be connected to the internet, because that's what it does. It takes what you said and it has to go out and then wait for the reply. So this is what it is in text and then decide what it is you're doing. But yes, Optimus will definitely have that to be able to communicate to you and for you to be able to tell it to do something. No, no doubt about it. And I would not be surprised if we start to see something like that by the next AID, or at least a, dis a discussion of what the architecture is going to be to do that. Because you know, it's always three hours long and there's lots of PowerPoints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have to listen to them closely and someone's going to mention something like that. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be very interesting, especially the implementation of direct communication to the service. Direct communication yes. and, and this yes. direct path FSD 12 doesn't actually have a huge line of code. They generate the code while driving, which is nuts. And the yes. same thing will happen there um, with the bot, I think. Do you think that those uh, this inference chip, could that be the thing that why the torso is a little bit bigger at the Gen 2? Oh, it shouldn't be because no, yeah. I, I don't okay. think it's a very big chip. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know, it's, okay. I, I think I the chip is, is only about, and it's only one chip, it's yeah. not two chips. Yeah, okay. As far okay. as we so. know, unless they decided to change course. <laughs> yeah, okay. Good. It seems like it's one. Yeah. And, uh, It just looks wider for some reason. I'm just wondering if they put more mm -hmm. batteries in. And the other possible, I don't think they went to 4680s. Mm -hmm. I still think there are 2170s in there because that's okay. what the original one was. Yeah. But that is one possibility of why the ah, torso yeah. is a bit bigger if they decided they want to go. But I don't think they're going to go to 4680s. And the reason maybe is. Maybe they finalized the design of the chassis and everything. Yeah. And then they're going to yeah, order but the body. I, and but yeah. putting 4680s into the bot right now may not make sense because you need them for the Cybertruck. Yeah. Now, it is a small number that's going in there, but depending upon the numbers that you have. So it's going to be, I don't know, 30 to 1 or something like that. Yeah. So for every 30 bots, that means that's one less Cybertruck that you can produce mm -hmm. if you don't have enough batteries. Yeah. So I'm still thinking that they're 2170s, but they may have decided that it's, rather than being 2.3 yeah, kilowatt yeah, yeah. hours, maybe it's going to be like 3 kilowatt hours or something like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe they, they leave some space there um, because they finalized kind of the design, but it, it wouldn't also make sense. Mm, I'm, I'm still... Not sure about that. Yeah, because, I'm not sure. But, but it could be. I, I mean, that they are flexible. Maybe they have a design for both batteries inside of the chassis, and that's why they just made the torso a little bit bigger. Yeah, could be. Yeah, could but be. it's could just be. speculation. Let's could see. Be. Let's see what Tesla is yeah, really doing. 